A famous writer once said that the truth is not for everyone, but only for those who seek it. This was in fact a correct observation because in daily life we don't want or need to know these ancient truths based on our lifestyle. We are mostly concerned with our immediate selves rather than thinking of the broader picture and rightly so. This is the society we live in after all and the truth is used to give the elite an upper hand as the control over the masses is now beyond critical. Where humans and gods came from may be one in the same question. If we consider the gods, for example, to be our creators, then that means Earth was picked as the location for human life to grow as a civilization. But why are we placed here? There absolutely must be an answer to that question one way or another. If we can consciously ask the question, and it bothers us enough that it itches our thinking, then we must consider that this is a burning question for a reason. Our thoughts may even be triggered at certain intervals in this growth process as we expand our brains and thinking ever more forward as the decades and centuries roll on. This sense to learn of our origins and what the hell we are doing here is gathering momentum. It is a question that is now raging in millions of people's minds. The more we consider this question, the more we search for the answers and lo and behold, we are finding them in the ancient records through reinterpretations of texts that we have been wrongly told to us. Only now we are going forward and learning of these things for ourselves. We are actively re-educating ourselves to the point that we are not relying on educators to tell us things. What is happening is the phenomenon known as self-education. Through this process, we can collaborate with other truth seekers and join the pieces of the picture together. A painstakingly slow process that will inevitably involve many millions of participants. Ancient Earth inhabitants used technology to build magnificent structures on this planet that we call man-made. But the technology involved in these designs and achievements are of such incredibly advanced proportions that we must at least consider that the civilization that built these things are now lost to this world. We know there was a cataclysm, but the events surrounding what triggered this ancient happening is knowledge that is lost to us. But the signs are everywhere that there was an advanced race of beings on this earth before us. What the relationship between them and us is may be the missing link. Wait till you hear this. Ever heard about the very ancient city submerged off the coast of India? The city of Dwarka is one of the lost cities of the world that dates back to the before time. The problem archaeologists have encountered with this lost city is the very fact that it is predating known history by thousands of years. They have abandoned excavation in the region due to a lack of understanding and what they are uncovering. Basically, Dwarka has the potential to rewrite the entire context of known history, and this is causing major concerns in elite circles. It is a watershed moment. The conservation involved at this site is off the charts, so drastically huge that they can't get their heads around the task involved, so they are literally sitting there with their heads in their hands, wondering what to do, because this place is advanced, ancient, and pre-cataclysm. Amish Shah tried to contact the Archaeological Survey of India with startling replies to his polite messages. The responses suggest that they are trying to hide something. For them to suggest that someone with a few questions has a preconceived notion of something he knows very little about is very suspicious. In fact, it suggests that what they have found at Dwarka has not fitted in with their own preconceived ideas of what they thought the site was and now they are adamant to close the door on the truth. If what they have discovered is the most ancient civilization known to us, then there must be something going on. Now, what if we were to tell you that what has been found at the submerged city has carbon dated to 32,000 years, advanced structures in ruins, submerged, and it is 32,000 years old. In Hindu scripture, it is said that Lord Krishna came to the earth from another planet. 
flying around in chariots and inspiring people who seen him as a hero. In the Mahabharata, it literally says there is a war going on in the skies above and even above that. This is a celestial war and one which he wins. This immortalizes Krishna in the eyes of the people who witness these events, and he is worshipped as a god to the would-be observer. Places like Dwarka are dedicated to such beings. Above this place, these things were witnessed, and civilization built the city here. These ancient events inspired so much, and the timeline of when this happened is mind-boggling. If Dwarka really is 32,000 years old, then what else have we missed in the contextual references of historical accuracies? We're going to get into this more in part two. This was our introduction, and we encourage you guys to comment below whatever information you would like us to feature in our video. For now, thanks for watching.